in the company DAC. Yes. Let's go add a new function. Let's call it public static. It won't return anything. It's going to be called git company size discount. I'm going to send it a product class. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to call the git part discount passing it p. So this is the method which is going to implement polymorphism for us. Uh, it's expecting a product class, uh, but whenever I call this method, it's going to, if the company size is less than 2,000, I'm going to be passing it a, a product list class. And if it's greater than 2,000, I'm going to be passing it a company product list. And so the caller, I'm basically unaware of the specific object type in which this method is expecting. So in the company DAC, let's mod uh, the get company products for the, that is returning a list product with the product list. Uh, let's modify that. So instead of calling the get part discount, it's going to call the get company size discount, and it's going to pass it to this object. As well, let's cut and pay, copy and paste this function again. And instead of product list, it's going to be company product list. So let's, everywhere we have company product list, let's, everywhere we have product list, let's replace it with company product list. Well, the get company products method, which is returning the company product list method, we need to change the parameter of that to accept the company size. And then down in this parameter list, we need to add company size. Open our form the code. Scroll down to here to the data grid v1 cell click. We're going to modify it to say if the size is greater than 2000. It's going to call this one. And let's do this. Let's cut and paste. We'll put else product list and we'll pass it to size company size made two typos the first one is it shouldn't be company size it should be size and up here should be less than 2000 let's run it So you see, there's no change in discount for this one. There is a change in discount, you see. And for this one, there's no change in discount because the original part is older than one year. In part four, we're going to implement encapsulation. We're going to create a sales lead table, populate it with test data, and create a sales lead class. We're going to modify the data access component, form one, and create a new form that uh, displays our sales leads. We're going to make modify modifications to explain public and protected to sales lead, company data access component, and the company sales lead. We're going to make modifications to explain private to the sales lead, 
company data access component, and the company sales leads. Let's go create a new table. I'm going to have company ID in Varchar 10, no nulls, lead ID. make the company ID and the lead ID the primary key. Let's save it and call it sales lead. Let's create our foreign key. Associate it to the, to the company table. Cascade constraints on the delete. So if a company is deleted, all the cells lead will be deleted as well. And let's save it. Let's go add some test data. To right click, show table data. Company ID one, cells lead one, priority two, John. Johnson, JJ at hrm.net, hrm, inc, so I went ahead and added some additional data, just make sure your company IDs uh, are associated to a company in your company table, and that the company ID and lead ID combination are unique. I recommend making all of your lead priorities greater than one. And your contact budgets, make them equal to what I'm showing you on the screen now.